Hello and welcome to this BFD3 tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial I'm going to be basically looking at an overview of BFD3. We're going to show you uh, most of the major features and we won't be going into loads of detail on everything. Over the coming months we're going to do more tutorial videos um, and if you want anything looked at in particular uh, leave a comment uh, below and we'll see what we can do. But in this tutorial we're just going to look uh, at BFT3, we're going to look at the browser, how to load up some presets, maybe change out some drum sounds and get a good groove going just to get you up and running with BFT3 or if you're considering a purchase just give you an overview of what BFT3 can do. So this is the main BFT3 interface. Uh, currently uh, we've nothing loaded. You can see that all the mixer slots here are greyed out. Um, so we should start really by just looking at the browser over here on the left. The browser is hideable so if I click on one of these tabs at the top here these uh, show me different uh, things that I can load. There's full presets, there's kits and there's drums grooves and then the automation um, part is something slightly different. We'll cover that in another tutorial. Um, but clicking one twice will completely remove the browser from the interface. So if it's not there just click on any one of these and the browser will appear. So we'll start by loading a full preset. Um, funk breaks that'll do for a start. And you can see here that the mix has been populated with various kit pieces and um, a little progress bar is showing us how long it takes to load every individual kit piece. So that's fully loaded. Let's take a listen. So at this point I could hide the browser and then start working on my um, arrangement or working on the mix. Uh, but let's say we want to uh, swap out a snare piece for example. I can select the snare channel here uh, and we can see a nice overview of the kit here. Um, snare channel is obviously there. If I uh, enable this little eye icon it gives me lots of nice information about the current kit piece that's loaded. Um, but if I double click on the snare image above the mixer channel you can see here on the left in the browser this is updated to show me all the available snares. Um, you can also see that it's gone onto the drums tab so we're browsing individual drums now. Um, and it's very easy to audition a new snare. I can simply click on one in the browser and it will give me a quick audition. It hasn't actually loaded that snare. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but it's giving me the option to cancel or if I click on the tick there it's actually going to load it. You can see that little progress bar loading up the new snare. Let's try something else. That's nice. So you can see it's very quick to just try different kit pieces uh, and get the sound that you're looking for. So let's hide the browser and let's take a look at the mixer itself. If I uh, move over to the effects tab here we can see uh, an effects chain and that changes for every channel that is uh, selected. So every channel in the mixer can have up to six insert effects and we have a whole send system as well so you can have auxiliary channels uh, the mixer is very fully featured. It's very similar to one that you might find in your door, Pro Tools, Cubase, uh, Live, whatever. So let's take a look down here at the bottom half of the mixer. We can see that there's a channel for every one of the kit pieces, but um, a lot of kit pieces have multiple microphones recorded. So there's a little small triangle to the left hand side of each channel that can be expanded out. So if I click on the snare you can see here here's the container channel and then inside we can see three microphone channels the snare top, snare bottom and snare side. And you can see here the signal when that's played. And I can treat all of those individually. I can put you know up to six insert effects on each channel. Um, I can mute solo
reverse the phase on each channel. So it's a um, very powerful, very easy way of coming up with exactly the sound that you want in there. So I'm going to collapse that again. Uh, the other thing we should take a look at over here is the ambience channel. You can see here amb mix, but within there uh, we have all sorts of channels. Um, we have the overhead microphones, we have the uh, room and ambient microphones, which are currently um, uh, not being heard in this preset. And then there's also a bunch of other um, sort of miscellaneous channels, if you like. These mono one to three channels are uh, mono room mics that are set uh, a certain way back from the kit so if you're looking for more of a roomy sound those are really good and then these two compressor channels are uh, certain kit, kit pieces uh, some of the snares and some of the kicks have been put through compressors um, high-end studio compressors um, I think a DBX and a, a 1176 and um, those compressor channels can be used in instead of the dry acoustic direct microphones um, or as well as, uh, you know, you can obviously mix in as much as you like of these channels. So the ambient mix bus there has a lot of a lot of power hiding within it, and it's worth having a look in there, whatever preset you open up, because there's always some interesting stuff going on. Uh, other things we can do in the mixer, for example, are uh, we can add auxiliary channels. You can see here um, I've already got two, but we'll add a third and up here in the effects we'll put let's say a reverb on there uh, we can pick a nice preset maybe just early reflection reflections and then let's send some of the snare channel over to that up here there's a little a little sends button uh, if i click that the sends panel appears and i've got four send channels per mixer channel and I can enable each of these and choose a different destination. So I'm going to choose Auxiliary 3. Why don't we rename that to something more useful like Reverb. Uh, so back to the snare channel. You can see there the destination is the Reverb bus. And uh, we can send as much or as little as we like with the level control. And we can also choose to send it pre-effects, post-effects or post-fader. Uh, post fader is kind of the more normal of the three so I'll leave it at that and then on the reverb we'll just stick that to 100% wet because uh, because it's a send channel so you can hear the reverb on the snare there let's just solo it So a very fully featured mixer uh, with a whole bunch of effects. Um, there's, there's everything you might need here to do a full mix of a full drum kit from compressors, uh, filters, EQs, reverbs, delays, uh, choruses, flanges, lots of modulation effects. Um, yeah, loads of stuff there to choose from. Uh, and the effects are quite nice. You can see here the overview of the six. Uh, we can't fit them all on this screen, but if we scroll along here, you can see the six effects. And if we had a whole bunch of effects there, we can just drag and drop them to rearrange if we want to. So there's there's really ultimate flexibility there on how uh, how you mix your drum kit. So let's move on and look at the Groove Editor. That's uh, another major panel. You can see here there's two main parts to the Groove Editor. There's the uh, editor itself here, which you know allows us to uh, micro-edit every single groove. And then down the right-hand side here is what we call the palette. And the palette allows us to uh, put a palette of grooves together that we might want to use in a song. So you can see here there's up to 128 grooves. Uh, we're using about 30 odd in this palette um, and we can select any of those and edit them in the main part and there's also a whole different bunch of ways that we can play those uh, different grooves in the palette. Um, there's really two main ones and up here you'll see by the transport controls you'll see three different modes. Groove off which just means uh, no groove is going to play. That's if you want to um, 
play BFD3 yourself from your MIDI controller or your electronic drum kit, then you would have it in groove off mode. But if you're using grooves, uh, you've either got the groove track, which you can see down here, which I'll come to in a minute, or the groove palette, which is just playing individual grooves. Uh, and there's a nice feature in the groove palette up here, which is define start and end. And you can see here this define end is set to random groove fill at the moment. And what that means is when I'm in palette mode, uh, it's going to play a random groove from this palette. Uh, and that's nice because if you want to just jam with BFD3, you know, as you might with a drummer, um, don't do anything pre planned, but sort of, you know, decide on as we've got here a basic funk groove and kind of jam in that groove and you can just sit and play your guitar to that. So that's what's going on here. You can see different grooves are being selected. The blue groove is the current groove. And it's worth mentioning about fills as well. These green grooves here are designated as fills and you can tell that from this little fill button down here in the bottom right. Uh, normal groove doesn't have that enabled. But fills are um, speci uh, specified as such so that when it's in this mode, when, the, um, when all the grooves are playing, what happens when you play a fill uh, it won't just loop over and over again, which just sounds unnatural and weird. But what it'll do is it'll play once and then it will go back. Um, there's various modes, but here you can see that uh, a fill will go back to the previously playing groove. So that's a really nice feature just to keep a more realistic, um, a more realistic flow to the drum track that's going on. So that's palette mode and then track mode really is down here and that allows you to put a very specific kind of playlist of grooves together and have them play back in sync. So you can see here we've got some selected and it's updating the main groove editor area as it plays along. And we could just drag uh, grooves from the palette to the drum track and reorder them, cut and paste through the right click menu uh, and loop here, you can see a loop marker, so if I put it there it'll loop back around to the beginning. Now if you're using BFD3 in plug-in mode the drum track will sync to your host tempo and to your host transport, so when your transport's playing BFD3 will be playing and it will be following the same tempo, same time signature as your main song in your DAW. So that's probably it for this overview. I should probably uh, just mention the key map page here. I'm not going to go into any of this, but the key map page is where you define uh, what BFD3 does with incoming MIDI. So uh, you can define what, uh, what kit pieces and what articulations are played uh, on what incoming MIDI notes and also uh, grooves can be triggered on incoming MIDI notes as well. But what you probably just need to know here is that if we go to file load key map there's a whole bunch of preset key maps here so if you're using an electronic drum kit or a MIDI controller then we've probably got a preset key map for you and all you need to do is go ahead load up your chosen key map and um, in the MIDI preferences in BFT3, select your, um, in this case it might be the Roland TD30, select that MIDI input um, as the active one and everything should be mapped for you and it should work out of the box. Obviously you can customize that which is what this key map page is all about but we'll look at that in a dedicated video in the future. Uh, and that's it for this overview video. Um, that's BFD3. Like I say, we're going to be doing a lot more tutorials uh, in the coming months. And if you'd like to see anything specific covered, then leave a comment or um, email us or get in touch via the forum or via F Expansion support. And we'll see what we can do. Uh, that's BFD3. Join me soon for another tutorial video.